Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome. In this session, we will continue our discussion on the determination of interest rate. Quick overview of what we discussed in the previous class. So, in the bond market, we have seen that there are supplies of bond and demands of bond. So, about the supplies of bond, uh, we have seen that they they are the borrowers of fund in the loanable fund market. and it mostly consists of government and firms and about the demand for bonds they are the lenders of funds in the market it consists of it includes households financial intermediaries including banks pension funds mutual funds etc and about the demand for fund we have also seen that the demand curve slopes downward that means at a lower prices that means when we said that the price is low the rate of interest is high so when the price is low keeping other things remaining constant the quantity demanded of bonds is higher that means when the price is low and that means when the interest rate is high in the market those who want to lend money those who want to demand bonds they will be demanding more because they are getting high rate of interest because they are getting high return for their investment so because of that lower the prices higher will be the quantity demanded there is an inverse relationship and we have also seen that about the supply curve supply curve slopes upward from left to right where we have seen that when the price is low when the price is low means the rate of interest is high and when other things remaining constant the quantity supplied of bonds is will be lower that means when the rate of interest is high that means the cost of borrowing rate of interest is for the uh, supplier of bond it also means that the cost of borrowing when the cost of borrowing is very high they will be supplying less bonds in the market that means they are borrowing less from the market this we have discussed and we have also discussed the market equilibrium we have seen that the point c is the point of equilibrium in this figure using this figure we can see that so assuming this is the demand curve and this is the supply curve b d is the demand curve and b s is the supply curve and we have seen that this is the point of equilibrium and the quantity of bonds demanded and quantity of bonds supplied is equal to 300 billion when the price is 850 that means the rate of interest is 17.6 so we have also seen that uh, this is the equilibrium point that bd is equal to bs so when the demand for so other points this cannot be equilibrium point for example uh, this point a or point i this cannot be the equilibrium point because there is excess supply because the rate of interest is very low the bond price is very high so this will put a downward pressure on the price of bonds similarly point f and e this cannot be the equilibrium point because at the price 750 um the quantity demanded is very high quantity supplied is only at the point till the point f that means excess demand is there this much excess demand is there because of that the excess demand it will push it will put a upward pressure on the prices of the bonds say as a result we can see that the price will be increasing price will be increasing uh, the rate of interest will be declining so finally we can see that either of this point if we move away from any of this point the equilibrium point we can see that uh, there will be pressure on if it is above price is above the equilibrium point then there will be a downward pressure on the price and if the price is below the equilibrium price there will be a upward pressure on the price and finally we can see that the 
demand for bonds will be equal to the supply of bonds so market equilibrium occurs when the amount that people are willing to buy equals the amount that people are willing to sell at a given price so this is what we talk about the market equilibrium and the movement along the supply curve and demand curve but there can be other factors so when i said that when we define demand for bonds and supply of bonds we said that other things remaining constant so what are the other things now we are going to discuss the other things the that means changes in equilibrium interest rates due to other things in the market so here one i am showing that just start with the mainly with the supply curve alone so this is the initial supply curve is this one uh, this is the initial supply curve so we have seen that the initial supply curve look at this blue colored uh, curve we can see that a uh, point f point g point c h i etc so what you can see that this is the movement along the supply curve that means higher price when higher the price that means low interest rate the quantity supplied in the market will be increasing that's what we have already discussed a positive slope that the positive slope a relationship between price of bonds and quantity uh, supplied in the market and there can be an increase keeping other things now see that the price of bonds remaining constant due to some other factors uh, there can be an increase in the supply of bonds maybe government is thinking that they want to borrow more or firms thinking that at the given interest rate or given price of bonds they are willing to borrow more that means they increase the supply of bonds so when there is an increase in the supply of bonds the curve will be shifting rightwards we can see it is denoted with a red color red colored um, uh, supply curve so this is what we are going to discuss now what makes the supply curve to shift rightwards or leftwards so one of the reason why the curve shift to the right that is because one is the government budget that means changes in government borrowings so when there is increased budget deficit the budget deficit means that is the borrowing requirement of the government that means when the government expenditure is greater than the government revenue government needs to borrow from the market that means budget deficit budget deficit means uh, it also denotes the borrowing requirement of the governments so when the government is having more and more budget deficit that means they have to borrow to make the government expenditure is equal to government revenue so because of that the increased budget deficit is shift the supply curve to the right so i'm just uh, linking giving one uh, some instances where the finance minister made a speech in the parliament with regard to the union budget 2021 2022 in the context of covid pandemic so you can see that you might have read it somewhere that means government to borrow 80000 crore in current financial year that is the announcement made by the finance minister so you can see that government will borrow additional 80000 crore from the bond market in current financial year to meet the expenditure that means by government issuing bonds so finance uh, this is what finance minister told by during presenting uh, budget 2021 why because until then before the covid pandemic corona pandemic you can see that the budget estimate the fiscal deficit was we are trying to make it below 3.5 percentage forecast was 3.4 percentage but because of the covid pandemic you know that there was a decline in government revenue and also little bit increase because of social schemes and all to expenditure to meet the pandemic you know that the expenditure increase so actually the main point there was the forecasted budget estimate was the budget deficit was 3.5 percentage but when at the time of presenting the budget the fiscal deficit uh, revised estimate it back to 9.5 percentage of the gdp so you see so there is a huge increase in the budget deficit so how could government uh, finance this anyway they have to find out this much money uh, what is the gap there that the fiscal deficit that they have to fill it out that is the borrowing requirement so then finance minister said that we have funded this through government borrowings that means government borrowings multilateral borrowings small savings funds and short term borrowings so of this the government borrowings this consists a big part that means we would need another 80000 crore that means this which we would be approaching the market in these 
two months. So the what she is she, the finance minister was mentioning here is the market means mainly they are approaching the bond market. They will be borrowing it from the bond market. So as a result, we can see that what what we saw here that the curve will be shifting rightwards. So that means government will be borrowing irrespective of whether the even the price of bonds we are talking keeping saying that that is remaining constant because of some ex other factors uh, government is borrowing more. So as a result uh, the curve will be shifting rightwards. So if government's fiscal deficit condition is better then the curve will be shifting leftwards. Government does not need to borrow much then the curve will be shifting from um, uh, right to left instead. So another factor uh, that makes shift in the supply of bonds is the changes in general business conditions. Suppose the economy is moving to a boom condition that means the economic the optimism in the economy the overall business conditions in the economy improve that means an expansionary business cycle stage. So at that time you can see that the expected profitability of investment opportunities increase. So during boom you can see that the prices of goods and services will be increasing and slight increase and overall there is increased demand for goods and services because overall is anticipated that the income of the people is going to increase. And Overall you can see that there is an increase in expected profitability of investment. That means investment, the aggregate investment in the economy increases during positive business environment. So in an expansionary stage that means when firms are making, they are uh, going, to, going to see that the business condition is going to improve, they are seeing that there is going to be a boom. So that means they are willing to invest more, that means they are willing to invest more on machines and machines and factories. That means the aggregate demand is going to increase from for firms and as a result they will be borrowing more because in order to finance the increased investment uh, they need more fund so that they will be borrowing from the firm, from the bond market. So because of that you can again see that the supply curve will be shifting rightwards that is a second factor. The third factor uh, is the expected inflation. What if there is an increase in expected inflation? So that means when the expected inflation increases that means there is an increase in expected inflation that also shift the supply of bonds supply curve of bonds to the right because when the inflation when firms anticipate that inflation is going to increase that means the payment the principal and the interest income they have to repay maybe after one year or after five years they think that because when there is an inflation the purchasing power of money declines that means the they are actually paying low re, lower real interest rate because that means uh, inflation means when they are returning money because now in the future so see that after one year there is going to be inflation that means the money they are going to return the principal and the interest income is going to be low in real terms. So that means lower real cost of borrowing when there is an expected inflation. So when I present all these things in a uh, diagrammatically you can see that curve will be shifting rightwards, shifting rightwards like this. So we here we have mentioned uh, increase in government deficit and increase in profitability of business investment and expected inflation all these may change in quantity supplied at each bond price that means the quantity supplied will be increasing at the given bond price right. Now let us see what would happen to bond price when supply curve shift other things remaining constant. So in this curve you can see that we have uh, stating here a downward sloping demand curve and upward sloping supply curve. So initial the price of bond is at a P star and quantity demanded and supplied is at a Q star right. So now what we are going to introduce here that the supply curve there is an increase all other things remaining constant and means even there is no change in demand condition overall business condition or something only we are going to say that some particular change is happening maybe government is going to borrow more maybe because of uh, increased uh, fiscal deficit uh, government is borrowing going to borrow more uh, then that means the supply curve is going to shift rightwards so this is the new supply curve 
So, in this case you can see that the new supply curve is this one, this is uh, BS1 uh, and you can see that this is going to be the new quantity supplied. So, when there is an increased pressure in the market to borrow more. That means, uh, government is supplying more and more bonds, they are issuing more uh, government bonds in the market. So, as a result, what you can see that they are actually borrowing more. So, as a result, the price of bonds will be declining. That means, when the price of bond is declining means the rate of interest is going to increase. That means, the cost of borrowing, the rate of interest in the market is going to increase. That means, price is declining when they are borrowing more. So, this is going to happen when there is increase in the cost, when the supply curve shift to the right. So, in contrast, you can see that when supply curve is shifting leftwards, maybe government's business, government's fiscal condition is very sound, very healthy position and that means they will be supplying less uh, bonds, that means they are borrowing less from the market. So, as a result, there is less uh, supply in the market. So, as a result, they are borrowing less. So, as a result, uh, you can see that supply the price will be increasing that means the uh, rate of interest will be declining in the markets so this is the uh, likely impact here so this is what we have discussed until now is mainly about the shift in the supply curve let us now focus on the other part that is the demand part of the bond market that is the when the demand curve shift to the right what is going to happen, uh, why it shifts and how does it affect the price and rate of interest in the bond market. So, demand we already mentioned that demand for bond means those who want to lend in the bond markets. So, when there is an increase in the demand for bonds that shift the demand curve to the right then you can see that uh, from the blue line in from the blue line curve is shift to the right it will become that uh, it is denoted with a red line curve so you can see here that the curve shifted to the right mainly because there is an increase in the demand curve for bonds even at the given price so look at this when i say that for example the initially uh, the initial demand curve you can see that the price is p star um, and quantity demanded is Q star. At the same price uh, due to suppose the uh, households they have more wealth and they want to demand more, they want to invest more in the bond market. So, at the given price they are willing to um, demand more bonds. So, that means at the given rate of interest or given bond now they will be demanding this much. So, that means you can denote this one at a new demand curve. Now, see what are the factors that make the shift in the demand for bonds. So, one of the factors is increase in wealth. When the household's wealth increase, or overall the economy is growing, uh, economic growth is occurring, that means uh, the income of the uh, members of the economy increase and income is a flow, then as a result you can also see that the wealth also increase. So, at this stage you can say that in an expansion with the growing wealth and they have to park their increased wealth somewhere in the market. So, they will be preferring one of the option is to invest in bond market. So, you can see that in an expansion uh, with the growing wealth, the demand curve for bonds shift to the right. Right. Even in that the given rate of interest or at the given price, the households and households maybe households will be invested in depositing their money in the bank or putting in pension fund or insurance companies and then banks, insurance companies and pension funds they will be or mutual funds they will be investing uh, these funds in the bond market. So, as a result all this happened because of increase in wealth. So, that we, ca we can see that the curve will be shifting rightwards. And you can next factor is the decrease in expected inflation. So, what we, we are going to see that in the future the inflation rate is going to decline. So, people see that households see that uh, this is an opportunity that means when the inflation is going to decrease in the future that means decrease in the expected rate of inflation rises the expected rate for bonds. That means, the future uh, money, the principal and the interest income that they are going to get 
in the future the real value of this one is going to increase in real terms the value of uh, principal amount and the interest income is going to increase when there is a decrease in expected inflation so this cause demand curve shift to the right so similarly if the, the households so the uh, investors the demanders of bonds or the lenders they see that there is going to be decrease in expected future interest rate so when they see that in the future the interest rate is going to decrease so this a decrease in future expected interest rate makes bonds more attractive and they think that in the future when the interest rate is going to decrease we all, we have already seen that uh, when the in, there is inverse relationship between interest rate and bond price so when the they see that in the future interest rate is going to decrease that means in the future whatever they have invested in the bond market when the uh, interest rate is decreasing expected interest rate they expect that interest rate is going to decrease that means the bond price is going to increase so that means when they are selling the bond in the market the price at which for example they bought it at 1000 today and if they see that uh, expected interest rate is going to decrease in the future that means the bond price is going to increase maybe they can sell it at 1000 bond they can sell it at uh, 1100 or 1200 that means they are going to make some capital gain as well so that means to summarize this one uh, decrease in expected future interest rate is going to shift the demand curve to the right similarly increase in expected returns and increase in expected returns on bonds relative to the expected return on alternatives alternative for example uh, stocks equity or investment in mutual funds pension funds etc also make fund more attractive and another factor is decrease in risk suppose the um, we see that overall economic conditions in the country is going to be more and more stable and is improving suppose the political condition economic condition so there is more stability so that will translate it into decrease in risk so when the there is decrease in risk decrease in the riskiness of bonds maybe then that causes the demand curve shift to the right and for example the overall credit rating for the country for a sovereign rating for the country suppose it improves then you can say that there will be more flow of foreign investment there is more flow of foreign investment the foreign of currency will be moving to foreign capital um, will be moving to the country that means they will be investing more of their funds in bond market because the default risk decreases so that makes bond market more attractive for them uh, even household they invest foreigners they invest if there is a decrease in risk decrease in uh, default risk so that also makes the demand curve shift to the right and again if there is an increase in liquidity uh, the liquidity of bonds liquidity means the ease at which you can convert these bonds into spendable form for example you can convert easily it into money without loss of time and value so that means if there is an increase in liquidity of the bonds that means the bonds that that you are buying in the market if you did the um, you can see if you want to sell you can sell it very fast and without loss of your time and without loss of much value and suppose the transaction cost is very low borrow brokerage cost is very low and the market is very well developed that means it is very easy for you to sell the bond that you are holding that also make that means the increase in the liquidity conditions also make uh, the demand curve uh, shifting to the right that means when the bond market is well developed that makes uh, increase in liquidity also making the people make a finding that bond market more attractive and as a result they will be investing more and as a result the curve will be shifting rightwards so let's see what would happen to the bond price when demand curve shift other things remaining constants so in this curve so you can again see that on the uh, left hand side on the y axis uh, we have we denote price on the right axis we denote uh, quantity of bonds that means uh, demand quanti quantity demanded and supplied that is mentioned on the right hand side so this is the initial equilibrium position you can say that market is at equilibrium at a price p star and quantity demanded and supplied at q star 
and due to the aforementioned before mentioned factors we discussed six factors here suppose uh, one of these factors uh, happen here that means favorable conditions that means suppose the income of households increase there is an economic growth and income of households and the income and wealth of households increase and then they demand more bonds and the de bond demand curve shift to the right so what you can see here you can see here that as a result the bond price is going to uh, increase that means uh, when the bond price is going to increase that means the rate of interest is going to decline so this is going to be the new price that means low rate of interest and this is going to be the uh, new quantity demand uh, demanded so you can see that the uh, uh, when the quantity demanded increase the demand curve shift rightwards the new intersection uh, is going to be this point right this at this point the new demand curve intersect with the supply curve so this is going to be the new equilibrium point and again in contrast we can say that what would happen if there is a decrease in demand so as a result you can see that quantity demanded will be declining and this is going to be the new demand condition uh, demand uh, quantity demanded and price will be declining at this point uh, price of bonds that means rate of interest is going to increase so similarly suppose see that uh, we are going to introduce another condition response to a change in expected inflation suppose we see that there is a rise in expected inflation so you can see that we are actually going to introduce both demand changes in quantity demanded and changes in quantity supply the shift in supply curve and shift in demand curve so initial equilibrium condition you can see that this one is at tip at one you can see that at this point price is p1 and the quantity demanded and supplied is at this point right q1 uh, now things that there is a rise in expected inflation so you can see that to this both demand and supply response what is going to happen the first one is that when there is a rise in expected inflation the demand curve will be shifting uh, leftwards the curve will be shifting leftward this is the first change so then when this curve is shifting leftward and at the same time what is what happened that uh, the supply curve supply curve thing that when the expected inflation is going to increase so they say that the future payment that they have to make is going to decrease so as a result the sup uh, supply curve will be shifting rightwards this curve will be shifting rightwards now you can see that the new supply curve is this one bs2 this is the new supply curve this is the new supply curve and this is the new demand curve and the new intersection is going to happen at this point so you can using this step 1 and step 2 you can see that this cause the new equilibrium point at this point uh, and new quantity demanded and supplied is going to be this so the product means in this example is actually we are assuming different rate of response in the supply curve response and the demand curve response then we can see that the new price is going to be p1 and that means price is decline and rate of interest has uh, increased so similarly we can expand this one response to business cycle expansion same logic can be applied that means step one business cycle expansion shift the bond supply curve to rightwards that means this is shifting rightwards and shift in the bond demand curve it also shift right uh, rightwards because it uh, at a lesser amount because the first response will be made mainly by when there is a business cycle expansion the first uh, in, in movement will be or response will be made by the uh, suppliers of bonds mainly firms because they see increased investment opportunities and the lateral the impact on uh, demand is of bond it will take slightly some more time because their income is going to increase after a later stage and their expected increase in income then as a result they also demand more bonds so you can see that from initial equilibrium position we they read to new equilibrium position at this point that means price of bond decrease so 
before summarizing let me also give you the fisher effect when there is an expected inflation rise we can also say that interest rate also rise so in order to measure that actually so the fisher equation uh, it is denoted as i is equal to the nominal interest rate is equal to real interest rate plus that is real interest rate plus uh, expected inflation rate so when the real interest rate is low there are greater incentives to borrow and fewer incentive to lend so the real interest rate is a better indicator of the incentive to borrow and lend and in the next session we will discuss alternative framework uh, to in determining a rate of interest in the market that is mainly by using the market for money we will be discussing market for money in the next session thank you